Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence in our lives, Lord. We thank you for your touch, Lord. We thank you that you speak to us in our spirit. We thank you that you touch our emotions. We thank you that you strengthen our bodies, Lord. Father God, we thank you that you created us and uh, we thank you that you take care of us in all these ways, Master. Yes, Father God, we thank you for uh, the, your plan and purpose. God, the plan that you have for each one of us, the unique uh, plans and purposes that you have for us, Lord, uh, so specific and so beautiful. And Father God, it's your will that we that we be empowered by your spirit. It's your will and desire that we, Lord, um, are skilled, oh God, that are to carry out, oh God, whatever you've called us to do. And uh, Lord, as we read about um, King David, that he led the people with the integrity of his heart and with the skillfulness of his hands, God. So we thank you for both both of these, oh God, is what you desire in us, Lord integrity of heart and the skillfulness of our hands by which we may minister, <clears throat> that we may lead and that uh, God, we may do what you've called us to do. So God, even this time we commit into your mighty hands as we look at um, several topics, we pray that you would speak to us, that you would empower us, that you would strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so last class, I think we just began talking about, uh, um, you know, this whole topic of uh, emotional intelligence. Right? Uh, what is emotional intelligence? And uh, uh, I think we just began to start uh, uh, addressing that whole topic. Um, but we also looked at uh, several other things like group making and and so on, which we which we uh, completed. So yeah, so that's um, <clears throat> that's something that we um, finished. Okay. I'm just going to open up and share uh, um, document. Just one second. Um, just a minute, please. Um, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to look at uh, what is uh, emotional quotient or emotional intelligence and uh, why is it important? You know, while we are studying life skills, you know, uh, why is why is that uh, such a big thing? Right? Um, is that something that I should know about? Is there something that I can you know, learn from and add to uh, as a skill, right? Emotional intelligence and emotional quotient. So we, we saw last class what it was, but I just want to kind of uh, reiterate what it is. So emotional intelligence, uh, it's 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 actually a measure of, um, I'm going to put it in the chat, right? It's a, it's a measure of an individual's abilities or individual's abilities to recognize and manage their emotions and the emotions of other individuals or maybe a team, right? So to recognize uh, our own emotions, right? to be aware of our own emotions. So that's the thing. So one, if one has a higher, let's say, emotional intelligence, okay, or emotional quotient, then it's easy to form or maintain interpersonal relationship because you're you know you you're aware of your own emotions and uh, and it's easy to now relate to others right so uh, that is one thing and uh, someone with a higher emotional intelligence will also it's it's also you know is also better at understanding uh, and understanding others um, maybe managing stress 
you know, oneself and also be able to help others deal with stress. Now, these are things that we, we will encounter in the workplace, right? Treasure, stress. And just because, you know, we are in ministry does not do away with this. You know, we will still have pressure. We will have, still have, um, you, you know, uh, stress to deal with. So uh, when one is aware of one own, one's own emotions, you know, why am I feeling this way? What is causing this? You know, like we said last class, you know, uh, the the little ones, infants or babies, they, they'll be irritated, right? Now they won't know why they are irritated. Right? And they'll make life miserable, right? For others as well, they'll be constantly crying, and uh, the parents are asking, "Why are you crying?" You know, either they are not able to speak, or even if they are able to speak, they are not able to explain, right? Because they don't know, you know, why is it that they are upset? Why are they crying? No, they don't know. It could be hunger, or it could be they are they are afraid, or it could be they are, you know, uh, you know, they didn't get what they want. Right? They thought it was like, for example, uh, my daughter once, you know, we came uh, and uh, it was when she was very small, right? So my wife picked her up from school and brought her home. And that day I was able to, uh, the company that I was working, uh, we had a half day for some reason. So I was able to get back home early. So I was waiting and I uh, thought we'll surprise her. So, so. Uh, my wife actually explained to her, this is, uh, you know, there's a surprise waiting for you at home. Okay, and took her home. So she was all very excited. Oh, surprise, surprise is for home. So we reached home and she reached home. I was waiting, I was hiding in the kitchen and I just came out and said, surprise. I thought she'll be all excited and happy, but she started crying. And she started crying. She said, what is this surprise? Because in her mind, she was expecting a chocolate, okay? She was expecting something like a chocolate, something sweet. And that's the surprise. Whenever she said, you know, my wife said, okay, there's a surprise waiting for her at home. She was, she was thinking, oh, there's a chocolate, a chocolate, some sweet, something to eat. And when her daddy just came and said surprise, she was so upset, she started crying, right? So the thing is, uh, you know, so... As we grow in maturity, hopefully, you know, we understand these emotions and uh, we are able to manage these emotions, right? And which is very, very important. Sometimes we don't have that skill. We are upset. We don't know why we are upset, right? And we continue to be upset. We take that into the work environment. We take our whatever we are upset, you know, about maybe it's our anger or something. We, we deal with our you know, we, we bring that into the work also, or the ministry. And when we are talking to people, when we are dealing with the team, let we bring that, um, the fact, our anger, or our, the fact that we are upset, we bring that into that environment as well, right? Maybe in correcting someone, we are angry with someone who actually maybe uh, did something to us. And then, but in correcting uh, someone maybe you know in the team who needs to be corrected or disciplined. We bring that anger in, which is not good, which is very very detrimental, right? So um, so we understand that a cultural quotient or sorry emotional quotient or emotional intelligence is very very important. So uh, you know some psychologists have done a study and they're saying okay there are three elements to it of emotional intelligence okay um let me just put that down okay the first one of course is what we have been talking about it is self-awareness okay self-awareness self-regulation and self-motivation self-awareness uh, self-regulation which means regulation means uh, you know uh, you're able to control you're able to manage you know, what do you do to control and manage your emotions uh, so that your behavior is uh, appropriate Right? It's uh, it's good. It's edifying. Thirdly, self motivation. Okay, so we look at all three uh, quickly before we move on to the next topic. Okay, so self awareness. Self awareness. It means to be emotionally aware. Why do you know? Why do I feel this way? Why do my emotions occur? Why do my emotions change? You know, suppose one morning if you're feeling down, uh, you need to understand, you know, why am I feeling this way, right? So 
which means it is effective self self assessment okay effective so let me just put that in the chat an effective self assessment of feelings and emotions will help us will help me to improve my confidence my self esteem in what way you know suppose i'm if i'm aware of my feelings if i'm aware of my emotions say okay i'm feeling this way because of this so i make a decision okay i'm not going to you know go down that path i'm not going to continue in that same way i'm going to change right i'm not going to feel that way i'm not going to think about that i'm not going to continue to feel upset about it okay i'm so i'm you know i come to a place of maturity and say i'm not going to continue feeling that way because i'm aware now you know, what what uh, uh, you know these emotions because we know that our emotions can actually bring us down ne- negative emotions right they can bring us down they can pull us down and so the whole day will go and we will not get anything done right we won't feel like it many people say no why didn't you do it i didn't feel like it why didn't you get this done i didn't feel like it why didn't you make those calls i didn't feel like it okay why didn't you feel like it i don't know i didn't feel like it okay but if you are emotionally aware hey i don't feel like calling because i don't like this person or i don't um you know uh, maybe i i don't know what to say i don't know what to do you know when you come to those things what if that person uh ask me something that i do not know like when you are when you are aware of your emotions is it because i'm afraid is it because i'm angry is it because I, you, when you aware of it then you will take appropriate action to correct it and that will result in more confidence you know you change that so you're confident and you know your self esteem and everything changes okay so it starts with effective self assessment rightfully assessing assessment means to evaluate okay the second one is self regulation okay what does that mean um it's with how to control and manage and rightfully channel our emotions okay uh, you can see in the chat how we manage our emotions control our emotions our abilities everything right uh, some sometimes you just you might feel like doing something but you need to be able to you know is it the right thing to do right uh is god pleased with this right we need to manage regulate ourselves self control is again a fruit of the spirit right being led by the spirit of god uh, and uh, we the spirit of god uh, works in our spirit and produces a fruit of self control which is uh, you know and also talks about a disciplined mind which is again a work of the spirit right god does not give us a spirit of fear but a power a spirit of power we have not received a spirit of fear but of spirit of power love and a sound mind so sound mind refers to a disciplined mind okay so these are some things that um, we need to be grow in right self regulation so it talks about self control it talks about trustworthiness okay uh, let me just put down down self control trustworthiness you know can you trust yourself can you you know can someone trust you to do certain things um being conscious or conscientiousness or which means that uh, you know you um you're responsible for your actions okay being trustworthy and uh, conscientious means to uh, to to actually take responsibility for your actions Okay. um let me just put that in the chat it's just a big word which means you know you take responsibility for your own personal actions you're not blaming others you know i could not pass this exam because you know xyz reasons that person didn't teach me well or that person didn't uh, you know, kept uh, you know so you're taking responsibility you're saying okay what do i need to do in order to get better what do i need to do in order to do well okay so that's you we are we are taking responsibility for our personal action personal performance and making sure that you know whatever we are doing matches up to our abilities and our values right 
so that's the that's the second thing that we uh, you know and and also adaptability and innovation innovation we looked at adaptability being flexible and being flexible in responding to change okay um, there are a couple of things here that i think we should know when it comes to being flexible right and we are talking about emotional intelligence right to be flexible to be able to manage multiple demands on time and energy okay um prioritizing effectively accepting rapid change wherever necessary right and adopting adapting your responses in the way that they may fit different situations right uh being flexible in how you deal with events and uh, seeing you know if there's a problem if there's a ch- challenge you you look at different perspectives of it right? so all this would come under adaptability and uh, innovation means doing things in a in a new and a novel way right so first of all we saw it was self uh, se- uh self awareness secondly self regulation or self you know management the second the third thing is self motivation okay so self motivation would involve uh, you know you, what is it do you have a personal drive um to achieve something to, to get some to get something done okay personal drive to improve to achieve and being committed to our goals what we need to do what we need to get done right and uh, maybe taking an initiative to uh, if there are openings if there are opportunities being optimistic and so on like right? motivating yourself so there is <clears throat> you're not depending on other external factors whether things are good or bad or uh, how you know we don't need people to always come and tell you hey you are good you can do it you know always to affirm what we're doing always to encourage what we're doing you know we don't need all that right not all the time right so you have grown to a place of saying you know i am going to right like um like what david did right in the worst of circumstances when everything was seemed to be lost he encouraged himself in the lord that's what bible says he encouraged himself in the lord so so this is a case of you know you telling yourself encouraging yourself or like even in the psalms he says why are you cast down on my soul hope in god for i will yet trust him why are you cast down lift up your head right so is self motivation so you're motivating yourself to hold fast to the commitments okay what did you commit to others what did you commit to god what did you tell yourself that you would do go ahead and do that right so that that gives us the emotional uh, that that comes under emotional intelligence right being aware of your emotions being able to manage your emotions and uh, being able to motivate yourself okay so this emotional um quotient therefore depends on something that you work on yourself okay and it also includes something that um, you're being aware of in others okay so, so what we would call as uh, maybe you can say emotional intelligence when it comes to you know our personal skills emotional intelligence when it comes to social skills right so personally you work on these things and you become aware you manage and uh, and you motivate yourself and and praise god we have been empowered by the holy spirit to do all these things right it doesn't need to be a uh, a purely psychological exercise right a mind over matter kind of thing it doesn't have to be that way because the spirit of god indwells us and he enables us to do that so we can make spirit led choices to be aware spirit of god reveals spirit of god holy spirit reveals okay this is why you are feeling this way you don't have any reason to be upset the spirit of god encourages us the spirit of god empowers us you know we are we read we read in galatians we say that we are called to walk in the spirit and we you we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh so what does it mean to walk in the spirit to engage with the spirit of god and to be led at, as directed by the spirit of god so we we do that and then we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh so 
the flesh wants to cry out the flesh wants to maybe lash out in anger the flesh is impatient but the spirit of god is the opposite of all that and he enables us to walk in life bringing life okay and to motivate oneself the spirit of god is a great encourager he is the counselor he is the comforter so he encourages us he gives us hope and comfort for every brand new day and we are able to walk in that hope and comfort and motivate and be motivated all the time right so you see that you know as believers we have that spiritual edge or we have the spiritual dimension uh where the spirit of god helps us by his word by his spirit we are able to be uh, emotionally intelligent in that way right and build our skills personally socially you know which means when we interact with others so what does that mean you know there's a word called empathy okay? it's an awareness of the needs and feelings of others okay so we become outward focused we are um let me just put that okay empathy and awareness of the needs awareness of the feelings both individuals and groups like maybe it's a team you are you know it's very important as a leader to be aware of hey what are the needs what might be emotionally challenging for this team right uh maybe this person has gone through a tough thing maybe this person has gone through um you know something in the family to be empathetic as a leader okay not to compromise uh not to be complacent and and excuse you know uh, if every other mistake but to be empathetic and to see okay this person is going through a challenging time and that's why they are behaving this now we need to address it right but are you aware first of all that's a question right am i aware that <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> that this person is behaving this way this person is saying such things it's because of these reasons right uh it's not that they don't want to serve it's not that they don't want to minister it's not that they, they you know they don't have an understanding of the calling etc but it's just that emotionally it's a tough time for them that is why they are behaving in a certain way so we are able to address that problem okay solve that issue Okay, so it's an awareness of the needs and feelings of others. Okay, um, so it, but it starts with being aware of our own emotional needs, our own feelings, uh, our own source of what is causing. You know, to be aware of what is causing, what are the sources uh, which are causing these kind of emotions in our own self, uh, before we can even be uh, aware of others. okay so um a few things to help us so em- em- empathy actually helps us to develop a stronger understanding of other situations so it includes these kind of things right let me um that again it includes understanding others so you can understand others therefore you can suitably develop them as readers as ministry leaders as spiritual leaders you can understand and because of that from that place of understanding you can develop others thirdly you can have a serving mindset it helps us being empathetic helps us to have a serving mindset how can i serve this person how can i help this person right now that will never happen if we do not understand their needs right unless we understand the needs how can we serve like we might be doing something and that person may not feel served or that may person may not be helped at all right maybe their need is comfort and we might be doing something which does not you know go anywhere near comforting so so that's the thing having a serving mindset and also leveraging which means increasing you know uh, or using to an advantage the kind of diversity that is in the group you know there could be different kinds of people different kinds of people with uh, you know different temperaments okay some are some could be uh, let's say very 
introverted some could be extroverted you understand these terms right introverted um they they're not necessarily engaging with people outside right they process things they they are thinkers they are maybe artistic people they think they they they're not very outgoing right? they they talk to people whom they know best they may not always want to be with people they may not always want to engage with people right uh extroverted people you know they they want to be with people they want to talk to people they want to uh, share their ideas everything with people they process everything externally they are extroverts um so we have you know there's there's more to that than uh, what i shared about introvert and extrovert but you know just to give us an understanding there are you know and and there are people like that and with different uh you know personality types so so different ways by which they uh, you know they process things they the way they are temperamentally right so empathy is to understand that to be empathetic is to understand that now why do we understand it helps us to serve them better it helps us to lead better right it helps us to uh, be a better leader spiritually it helps us to be effective you know lead the team in an effective manner so we can use that diversity uh, the different kind of personalities the kind of people in the team to our advantage so for example you know when you understand uh, and you're empathetic and we understand okay emotionally this is how this person is right uh, for example in the church now we talk about different people and the way they serve and all that some people are very very good uh, they keep to themselves they may not you know interact with people others much but they are very good with machines and technology technology i'm sorry uh, computers and so on okay so to put such a person in a team which is let's say welcoming people and meeting people and talking to people getting to know people now that's a wrong fit right uh and this and the and vice versa right you put a pe- person who is a people person who always wants to talk to people always wants to interact with people and so on you put that person behind a computer and say okay you do this or behind the machine and say you do this now that's a that's a waste of their talent and ability so we leverage diversity we make use of uh this difference in our teams to the best advantage when we understand right it's an awareness of the needs and feelings of others so you see that hey this person has a natural tendency and a natural need to meet with people talk to people they'll make a better uh you know a better team member if they are allowed to welcome people to make people feel at home to connect people with others right so it you see how it helps right so emotional intelligence is important it's a skill that we all of us need to uh, learn okay so how do we how do we do that how do we apply it in our lives okay firstly um um yeah let me just put it here um these are things that uh, that we have actually looked at earlier also i'm just going to repeat this overlap of these things okay by developing our social skills you know being easy to talk to okay being a good listener so we're talking about being empathetic in a social setting right be a good listener ask questions um by being uh, sharing or you know you you share uh, about maybe information uh, don't restrict that or maybe you share about your own lives and uh, own life and being trustworthy so yeah so what is the difference between sympathy and empathy okay sympathy is uh, okay let's let's just uh, let me just share the uh, you know uh, what the term would refer to so we then we know uh, the um one second okay let me just put it here so where is it is you know you feel pity if you're sorrowful for 
something bad that has happened to someone, you know, someone else's misfortune. Okay, so that would be sympathy. You're feeling, um, you're not trying, you may not necessarily try to understand. You know, you feel compassion, you're feeling sorry, um, you are, you know, you have sympathy, and that moves you to action, right? You do something about it. Um, so that's sympathy. You're, you're feeling pity, right? You're feeling bad because someone's gone through some bad uh things or tough things right? whereas empathy is uh, something else altogether right you you are being aware of someone's uh, emotions you know may, maybe and it's always not negative you know it's like someone's feeling um let's say they uh, they're very upbeat temperamentally and they do that you you become aware of that um and then you you know, you you work with that. You use that so that it helps the person, it helps the team, and so on. Right. So, so empathy would mean to even help reach across and help that person who is, uh, you know, going through something. Because uh, you might feel sympathetic, and you may not necessarily help. But when you have an understanding, when you are empathetic towards a person, then you would want to solve that problem. Uh, and uh, you help that person out so that that person can be effective right? and in a team setting they will be you know productive and uh, and so on right so that's that's a basic uh, difference between empathy and sympathy like uh, i'll just put the um uh, empathy the the meaning again you know what we looked at right um sorry just trying to mm. okay i kind of lost it in the notes somewhere okay so so that yeah yeah here here it is it's an awareness let me put yeah okay so you see both you know side by side you you one after the other, you know it. Okay, so it's um, it's an awareness of needs, feelings of others, and being able to see things differently from their point of view. So it's it's kind of close, but sympathy deals with more with feelings of pity uh, and sorrow for someone's uh, you know misfortune, uh, whereas empathy is being aware of what they're going through, being aware of their emotions, and and acting on it, do something about it. Right. You see other per person's point of view, etc. Okay. Right. So, um, so we said we said you know, uh, being easy to talk to, being approachable, being a good listener, uh, asking you know questions, pointed questions, sharing, and being trustworthy. These help us to become empathetic, to also to increase our emotional quotient or emotional intelligence skills okay this is actually increases when we when we uh, learn that okay um, so here are a few other things okay learn to effectively listen to both the verbal and the nonverbal messages okay. so that increases our empathy so you're saying you know Hey, that person said this. That's why I did it. Okay, but are you aware of the way the person said it? Right? Maybe that person said it. You know, saying, uh, "Okay, uh, okay, uh, I'll be there. I'll be there at uh, six thirty in the morning." Okay, so it's a very unwilling, hesitant. Or was that person very interested in saying six thirty? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there, sure. And then you know, six thirty. I don't know. I'll I'll try. Uh, yeah, I'll. I think I'll be there. Right. So we see three kinds of responses, and then we we said, okay, that person said it, so therefore it should have been done. It's not done. Right. How did that person say it? What was the body language? What was the tone? Right? Uh, are we aware to the aware of the non-verbal? This is the, what they, the words were said in a particular way, but then what is the non-verbal message? What was the expression? What was the tone of voice? Okay. So, 
what was the emotion when they said it okay so that's the thing secondly um questions ask people find out more about what they are feeling okay people may not necessarily open up and say you know today this morning i'm feeling little uh, uh, a little down you know i'm feeling a little discouraged they may not say that and right? when you ask them they will say hi how are you i'm fine okay but then you might have to be a little more patient and say and ask hey you don't feel you don't look all that good Is something happening right so when we ask questions instead of assuming that they might be happy then you know the person is able to open up and share uh, about what's happening what's going on so by by asking questions we also become aware emotionally what is happening right what is hap- what what they are going through okay then third thing is to acknowledge and respect the feelings of others okay very important right uh, even though they might say things that you disagree with okay um and maybe you know just by because we respect their feelings or you acknowledge their feelings doesn't mean that you agree with it right so that's what we are afraid of no suppose that person says something and then we hey i don't believe in god i don't believe in jesus then immediately we turn disrespectful say how can you say that you know just acknowledge okay hey, that's that's what you that's what you you know that's what you believe in or you don't believe in this so hey, i that's your that's your opinion that's your perspective well, i respect that but let me share let me tell you why i believe what i believe right? so that was you know just about people's faith and so on but then this could be about any work situation uh why a person says no we shouldn't do this we shouldn't go there we shouldn't have meetings here we shouldn't have it we shouldn't uh, you know start church at this time we should not have this ministry it all kinds of things would come in you know like a church ministry kind of a setup um to be to respect the thoughts and ideas of others to acknowledge that to respect the feelings and doesn't mean that you you're agreeing right and even when we Uh, disagree we do it in a in a firm way but in a loving way and uh, we we do it you know we looked at that right we looked at how not to argue when you disagree we looked at the we saw those videos right okay and avoid making statements that are judgmental belittling rejecting or undermining okay so that's uh, that's one more thing that we need to be uh, aware so these would help us to become more and more emotionally aware of what others are going through what others are feeling and that will really help us you know as ministers we need to grow we might we, we, we cannot make an excuse and say hey temperamentally i'm not sensitive you know i'm not sensitive to others feelings uh, and this is how i've always been so um, so this is how i will be we cannot make that excuse right um we need to grow we need to be we need to become mature in all things in christ jesus right so this is one more thing that we need to grow in okay so this is about emotional intelligence okay this is a uh, this is a skill which we we need to be aware of which we need to um you know increase in right and we need to use it right and it's very very valuable in uh, in our own lives our own lives becoming productive our own lives becoming um you know uh, we being happier our emotions you know handling our emotions well and uh, and like i said we have the holy spirit and the word of god a great resource to help us so we have an edge it's just that we have to apply right rightly use the word of god and uh, you know be led by the spirit of god when it comes to these things okay any questions on this further questions that you might have anything at all any real life situations that you may be faced or 
that you want to talk about. Okay. Okay, another topic which is, um, okay, I think it's all fine. Okay, another topic which is closely related to this is cultural intelligence or cultural quotient. Okay, so let me just explain that. Okay, what is, first of all, you know, what is culture? Okay, culture is simple, simply about, um, you know, the ideas, customs, behavior uh, of a particular group of people or a society, in society, you know, there's certain uh, ways of doing things and culture, customs, you know, include many things, you know, the way we speak, the way we dress, the food we eat, uh, everything, right? So it's, it's, it's a whole lot of things that go as a package. And, uh, and these are some things, uh, it could be a particular group of people or a society. And, uh, and so, so to be culturally sensitive and to be culturally aware, um, you know, you understand that, okay, this is the culture, this is the norm, this is the customs. So therefore, uh, how can I work with such a culture? Okay, how can I work with such a person who's coming from a culture like that? How can I, you know, so to be able to identify that. So that we call as cultural uh, intelligence. Okay, cultural intelligence. Okay, so... So the thing is that uh, uh, what when we say what is cultural intelligence? Okay, maybe a maybe a quick way to explain that would be this. Just a minute. Um, okay. Okay. A um, quick way to explain. Cultural intelligence. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's defined as uh, as this as the ability to adapt to new cultural settings. Okay, uh, to new cultural settings, the ability to adapt to that. So, you know, if you look at um, uh, if you look at uh, our own country, like our own nation, we have. You know, if you look at uh, just, just the class, no, Aaron is from somewhere, Kiran is from somewhere else, Siddharth is from somewhere. I'm from, you know, I'm we're probably close to where Siddharth is, you know, three hours away from where Siddharth is. I, and uh, I'm sure that there are customs, cultures, which are different in each of our places. Okay. And uh, to be, and that would actually affect our working or influence our working. It would influence our working. It would influence our decision making. Uh, it would influence the way we, uh, uh, you know, we, way we do things. Uh, we don't realize it, but uh, it it affects us, right? Uh, a person who uh, probably, you know, was in a city and city life is uh, very very different from a person who's been in a maybe in a maybe in a in a mountain, you know, in a very rural setting and the way they live their lives. And so, so culturally, uh, you know, all these customs and everything, it um, it changes the way or it influences the way we work and, and do things. So to be aware of that, right, and to be able to adapt to that right, is, is very important. That's a skill. Okay. Um, okay. We've run out of time. So what we'll do is we'll we'll continue this in the next class, and um, we'll we'll look at cultural intelligence. So we look today at emotional intelligence. The next class we will look at cultural intelligence, and it's a very interesting topic again. Okay. And hopefully it'll open our eyes to um, to look at our own culture, to look at the culture of others, and how see and see how effectively we can work. Okay. Uh, together. Okay, we'll stop here. Thank you. You guys have a great weekend. Or oh, we'll meet again. Namaste. God bless. Bye-bye.